Hello and welcome to this new episode of Linux Literacy. Today, WGET, the most OP web scraper ever made. Coming up. So yesterday we are talking about WGET, so most of you already know WGET, but today we are going to go a little bit deeper in how it works and how you can make things that you probably didn't know that you could do. So let's actually start by the default. How should you go about feeding some URLs to WGET? Now WGET is compatible with the standard URLs, so you can just put a standard HTTP or HTTPS URL. It also is compatible with FTP or FTPS. You can specify the port using the two dot, and you can also feed it the user and password with the at sign. Now there's also other way to feed user and password. You can do dash dash user and dash dash password, or you can also do dash dash ask password in order to give it the password. Now that we know that, we can download a standard file off any server. So we, if we need some kind of archive, we would just put the name of the address and then press enter. That's about it. Now there's a few commands that we can use in order to push it a bit further, right? Because most people that will use WGET beyond that point will use it for two things. Either they will automate whatever download they need to do, or it's because they want to get a whole website. So really scrape from top to bottom from a specific domain. Now, both of those things are possible with WGET. You can absolutely automate everything. To automate, there's a bunch of small options that you can use. One of them would be dash B, which means background, which means that when you launch your command, it will automatically go into the background. Now, that means that you can launch multiple WGET command from the same terminal. It can make things way faster. You don't have to wait for one to finish in order to go to your next. And you can actually tell WGET to put the logs inside of a specific log file using dash O so that you don't have to lose that precious information. You can tell it, hey, I want all my errors to go in that log. Now, if you don't want WGET to actually delete the log each time it creates a new process, because by default it will override the log if there's anything new, you can use the dash A command, which will append the log instead of overriding it. Now, we can tell WGET how stubborn it should be. By default, WGET will actually retry 20 times if it's not able to get an answer from the server. Now, if the server tells its connection refused or not found a 404 error, of course it will stop then and there. But let's say that it doesn't have an answer or it fails in the middle of the download, it will actually retry up to 20 times. Now we can tell it uh, to retry infinitely, that's a possibility, and we can also tell it to retry a more or less amount of time using the dash T option, so the dash try option. Now we can also tell it to be a little bit smarter. So normally when you download a file, let's say that your download stops in the middle. Let's say that your internet crashed for whatever reason if, and it was a very big file. By default, when you will download again that same file, it will create a file name, the same file name, dot one, leaving the old truncated file alone. Now that can be useful if ever the server has actually changed the file that you're downloading, but if that's not the case, you can do dash C. Dash C is just there to say, hey, if I actually have a file, continue where we left off. So finish up the download of this actual file instead of trying to do something new. Now you need to be sure that the server did not change because if the file on the server changed, then your file is going to be garbage. But of course, most file on a server won't change just like that for no reason. So it's pretty much good to use if you're downloading any large file. Now you can also give it a little bit more authority. Let's say it that way. We saw it in the LFN series. We had to use the dash dash no check certificate, which just means, hey, just ignore if the HTTPS does not work and I'm connecting on an HTTPS server. That may be useful if you're downloading from your own server. You probably have uh, ran into uh, that issue if you've done a server using HTTPS and not having a Let's Encrypt actually working on it yet, or maybe never. In any case, that can be useful to download some data. 
Now let's actually go into the little bit more complex part of wget, where we can get more out of our wget. So to start, let's start with actually downloading what is inside of our web page. So let's say that you go on a web page. It could be mine. It could be anybody else's. Um, let's say that you're on maplecircuit.dev and there's a picture on the web page. By default, if you tell it to download a given web page, it will only download the actual HTML that you see on the screen and nothing else. It won't download the inline image, won't download any sound, any um, reference picture or docs. It won't download any of that. Now the dash P option, which will download, you could say the whole page, will download everything that the page needs to load and make sense if you were to run locally. So it will download those images, those sounds, or any other thing that the page needs in order to display correctly. Now, this does not mean that the page will be readable on your own desktop because it will still be a carbon copy of whatever you're looking at, meaning that some links may still point to the actual server instead of the local copy that you have on your computer. In order to fix that, you would use the dash K, which is the short for convert link, which will make it so that every link inside of the HTML page will actually point to the local copy on your computer instead of pointing to the server. So that way your actual page that you're downloading will be a full page that works on your computer. So you can now archive whatever website you're downloading. Now, WGET is much more powerful than that. You can go one step further and turn on recursive retrieving. Now, recursive retrieving is a little bit dangerous, so don't use it without understanding it fully. So we're going to go a little bit into it. It's the dash R option. By default, it can do up to five jumps. So it can go off the, it can go into a depth of five. What does this mean? It means that let's say that you look at a page and a page has a bunch of link. Let's take Again, Maple Circuit. Maple Circuit has a bunch of links on the side and it has even the sources inside of each page. Now, if you have recursive one, it means that everything that is on your page will be followed and we will download the page itself that is at, at that destination. So let's say that you have five sources and all the pages on the side, it will download all the pages on the side and the five sources. Now, if we up to two, it will download of course, all the page on the side, all the sources, and all the links that were inside of the first sources, and of course, all of the sources of the other pages on MapleCircuit's site. So you can see how five level of recursion is insane. So to be able to lower that, you can do the dash L option, which can be used to reduce the depth. So you could do the dash L1, which will tell it, hey, you can go download all the pages that are linked to that specific page, but not more. That would be the safest option. You can also put infinite recursion if you're an absolute insane person with dash L O or dash L inf. Now, never do that, please. You're just wasting bandwidth and bandwidth costs money. Don't do that. <laughs> so let's say that you want to be a little bit smarter with how you're going about things. There's two tools that you can use. First, you can use the dash capital D. Dash capital D allows you to put a domain list. So you can do dash capital D, maplecircuit.dev. And if you would want to add any other domain to your list, you could do maplecircuit.dev, comma, google.com, comma, and whatever page that you would want to put there. Now, this will automatically exclude any other domain that is not in that list. Now, you can also exclude domain directly. Now, you can do it using the dash dash exclude dash domains. And same thing, you can put your domain list. Now, that can be used either alone or even with the dash D option, because the dash capital D can be used to tell WGET, hey, I want to allow, let's say, maplecircuit.dev as a whole, but maybe I don't want to download cdn.maplecircuit.dev. Maybe that part I don't want to actually download, so I'm going to exclude that one using the dash dash exclude domain option. So that's also a possibility. 
So with that, you have the base in order to pretty much strip every website of all the information that you would want to need. Now, a quick reminder of how you should go about constructing a recursive page scraper. The simplest way to go about things is to use, of course, the dash R, but also use the dash P and the dash K option. This will give you pages that actually work on your computer and using the dash P will download all of the files that are integrated inside of your HTML page. Now with that, you need a domain list, okay? If you don't use it, it's going to be hell on earth. So please specify the domain that you're actually downloading. If you want to strip the whole website, you can just do dash R. And if you want to actually restrict to one step or two step or whatever amount of step that you want, use the dash L option in order to specify the amount of level of depth that you actually want to use. So that way you have a safe way that you can actually download a website and you can have your own copy of it to keep offline. So that can be actually useful. Now it would be a lie to say that that's all of the option possible with wget. You can restrict what you download on pretty much any, any basis that you want. It can be the file type, it can even be dates. There's a bunch of things that you can do with wget, but that's the basic and I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you well, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Of course, if you want to become a member, you can actually see those video a little bit before anyone else. So consider the membership. Now, of course, if you have any future ideas for those videos, for those Linux literacy video, you can always put them in the comments. I'm really open to more ideas. I have some in mind, but I don't know if I will be able to actually pull them off. Anyway, I'm working on some future stuff. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, oh, oh, let's let's have the word at the end. Oh, we, we don't have that. Let's not forget that. GNU, okay? Today, if you want to show everybody that you're an absolute unit, we use GNU, okay? So GNU equals unit, guys. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, take care.